So less than 37. We're going to add and subtract rational expressions. Okay, remember rational expressions in algebra is just a fancy word for fractions. Oops, I barely fit that. Oh, not good. Oh, there we go. Okay, so these are just fractions. So what do you need to add or subtract fractions in math? What do you need? I know I can't hear you very well. If you are answering, then I can't really hear you. No. You need a com common denom, right? Common denominator. So, um, well, we could do that in normal math, just figure out the least common multiple of the two denominators or what they both go into. In algebra, I, I mean, in algebra, it's just as easy, if not easier, to find a common denominator. Um, and just like anything else in algebra, if you understand why, it's easier. But the steps are really easy as long as you can remember them. But they're easy to remember if you understand why they're the steps. So let me just um, let me just jump in for just do an example. So here's example one. So this one already has a common denominator. So 1 over 2x plus 3 over 2x. Well, how do we add fractions? We just add the numerators, 1 plus 3, and keep the same denominator. So you can simplify this because you can add constants together. So 4 over 2x. And then you can reduce. Sometimes you can reduce. So 4 and 2 reduce. 2 over 1, or you basically just have 2 over x. Does that make sense? And then what does your, what does that little alarm going off in your head tell you? Drew? Nice. That's what I, that's what I love about you. You always tell people what they can't do. That's what Drew does. So x can't be 0. This isn't required right now, but eventually, especially if a test asks for it, give the exemptions, uh, exclusions, uh, x can't be 0. But if you, if you tell me x can't be 0 when I don't tell you to tell me that, um, then that tells me you're awesome and I'm going to give you extra credit. Okay? So that's the easy one. When they already have a common denominator, you just add the numerators and you're good to go right? Well, same thing. Here's, that was 1a, 1b. doesn't matter what the denominator looks like. If you have x over x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 1, well, then you would just have x minus 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. So remember what we did after we added the numerators, we saw if we could reduce. Well, the reason why we can reduce that is because we know the factors of 4 and 2, and that 2 goes into both of them. Well, we know this factor. There's no fact. There's just one factor here, this chubby factor on top. But then down here, we can factor that. So let's factor it. x minus 1 over, okay, this is a trinomial. There's nothing, steps to factoring, there's no GCF. It's not a difference of two squares, but it is a trinomial. Can you guys figure that out? So remember your cheeks and tats. And then what times what equals one, but adds to get negative two? Good, minus one, minus one. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend like you answered. Okay, so now we can take our red pen and cancel that factor with that factor. 
So we're left with nothing on top. If you're left with nothing on top, you still need a 1. And then over x minus 1 and bt dub, x cannot equal 1. Okay? Does that feel all right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, you know, when in doubt, factor it out. Like this, you get this answer and you're like, okay, something, I feel like something can happen there. Yeah. Whenever you see a trinomial like that, if that math drool in your mouth that's like, I'm so excited to factor, doesn't tell you enough, then when in doubt, factor it out, okay? All right, so that's when you have a common denominator, no problem, that's doable, okay? So let's, let's try one without a common denominator. Let's try um, example 2a. Here's what it looks like. So this just this doesn't even say add or subtract it. That just says find com denom of one over two x and one over seven x. Okay. So finding the least common multiple works the same way with the big numbers with the coefficients. So what's the common denominator of two and seven? 14, okay? So now the factor, if this was, if x was 3, this would be 2 times 3 and 7 times 3. Um, so it would be 6 and 21, I guess. But the, comp, the, the least common denominator of 6 and 21 is what 14 times 3 is, which is 42. But forget I just said that. When you're dealing with literal factors, the common denominator is just the biggest exponent of each factor. In the past, when we were finding the GCF, the greatest common factor, it was the smallest exponent of each factor. So these both just have exponent of one, so it's just x, okay? And then you have to rewrite this. So what do you multiply by two x to get 14? Good. 7. So 1 times 7 is 7. If you are unsure, reduce that. And what do you get? 1 over 2x. But don't reduce it because we have to write it like this. So times 2 times 2. So you get this. And if I were to add them, adding them together or subtracting them, it'd be 9 over 14x or 5 over 14x. Okay? So... That golden rule of fractions still applies. Whatever you multiply by the denominator, you have to multiply by the numerator. And that part I feel like you guys can handle. Finding that common denominator is sometimes tricky, but um, it really helps when uh, you actually have uh, more pencils and more colors because you can see what one denominator is lacking in order to look like the other denominator, okay? Um, I'll, I'll show you here in a second here. Here's one. Here's 2b. We got 1 over x squared minus 4. Um, and then let's just add them. It just says find the common denominator. We're just going to add them just because we can. Over x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay. All right, when in doubt, factor out. We don't know the factors of this. So remember, we're trying to find the least common multiple, and you, you need to know your factors before you can do that. So let's factor it out. How does x squared minus 4 factor? It's, you're cutting out, but I, I'm pretty sure you said x plus 2, x minus 2, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay, so remember the three steps to factoring. First, you're looking for a greatest common factor. There's nothing in there. And then you're looking for a difference of two squares. So remember to factor a difference to two squares is the square root of first plus the square root of the second times the square root of first minus the square root of the second. Good, good. All right, how do you factor this? I 
I don't know what is it. <laughs> Two and three. Yes, two and three. Okay, okay. So, right now it looks like there is, what, one, two, three different factors, okay? So it's kind of like three different letters, like Y, X, Y, and Z type of thing, okay? See how these are three different factors. These X's have nothing to do with each other because they're inside a sum, so... They're, these are separate factors. They're chubby factors, but they're factors. So you have to keep them separate. So in the least common denominator, you don't have to include this x plus 2 twice. You just have to include it once. Remember, we want this one to look like this, and we want this one to look like this. Okay? Well, what does, what does this one need to look like the left one, and what does the left one need to look like the right one? Well... This one looks like it has an x plus 3, so I need an x plus 3 on this one. And whatever you do to the bottom, do to the top. And this one looks like it needs a, uh, what, an x minus 2, right? Whatever you do to the bottom, do to the top. Okay, now the denominators look the same. They're in the wrong order, but remember, multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter what order it's in. So now they all have the same factors in the, den in the denominator. So now you can add them. So this is just x plus 3 plus x minus 2 all over that thing. x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 2. Okay, simplify this. Just combine those like terms. And you get 2x plus 1 all over x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 2. And by the way, what can't x equal? Negative 2. Nice. Okay. Negative 2, negative 3, and positive 2. Does that feel all right? Now, you could have done it the same way by, look. okay, include the largest exponent of each factor. Well, there was no fa no exponents here. So we didn't really, have, we just had to include each factor once. So that, that made a little bit more sense. Why don't you try? What is happening? You're trying to move your picture. <laughs> Like there, is that good? Yeah. Wait up. I don't have to wear a mask. You guys have to wear a mask. Well, you're not wearing a mask now, but why aren't you here today? Um, I'm not here because there are members of my family who are potentially um, COVID. COVIDed. Um, so they had a test yesterday, so we're waiting for their results, but they showed some symptoms, so we're just trying to be careful and safe, and if for some reason they have COVID, then then you guys are safe too. So I'm, I'm, we're all safe. Yay. Okay. Who asked that? Was that you, Silas? Okay. I know it's hard to not it's so hard. Be in my presence. But you have my brother there, so that's a close second. I mean, he's not quite as attractive as me, but he'll do. Just kind of blur your eyes when you look at him, and it's, and it's tolerable. <laughs> All right, let's move on to example three. No, we're going to skip three because we've been doing that. It just says find the undefined values, so the exclusions. So you just have to factor the denominator and see what X's won't work, okay? All right, so example four is the last one of this lesson. This is so exciting. So let's do example four. Four A, and if we need to, we'll do four B. So one over three X 
cubed plus 1 over 6x squared. Okay, so I'm going to do this two different ways so you can kind of see the difference here. I like the colored pencils way or the colored pens. Um, but I'm going to show you both ways. All right, so how do I make this one look like that one? How do I make the three look like the six? Six, six multiply by two. Yeah, just multiply by two. So times two, times two. Okay. All right. Now the sixes are taken care of. Now how do I make the x? These x's look like the left x's. Multiply by x. One more x. Right. Times x, times x. Okay. So then I get two plus x all over that common denominator, which is 6x cubed. Uh, you can rewrite these if you want. Um, basically, that's 2 over 6x cubed plus x over 6x cubed. But if you're going to rewrite it, just write the numerators as, just write it as one fraction already because the only step after this is just adding the numerators. Okay. So is that it? Are we good? Can I cancel? Can I reduce that two and the six? Yeah. Who said yes? No, no, you can't. It's, it's no, you can't. Up. Right, because remember, it's being added and then divided, so it's not a it's not a multiply divide cancellation. Okay. So you can't cancel that. It's very tempting. But remember, every time you do that, somewhere in the world, a small kitten dies. Did we talk about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. that, that was maybe a couple of years ago. But don't kill the kittens. All right? So that's one way to do it. The other way is just to rewrite your denominator here. Um, and remember, you're just doing it the way you normally do fractions with 3 and 6, so you know it's going to be 6, okay? And then you're just looking for the biggest exponent of each factor. So x cubed, x squared, so x cubed, okay? And then you have to ask yourself, okay, what do you multiply by that to get 6x cubed? Okay, well, the x cubes are fine, so I don't need to multiply by another x, so 3 times 2... So 1 times 2, and you don't have to write these lines. It's just you can do it in your head if you want. Okay, so how do I make this look like that? Well, the 6 is fine, so x squared times x times x times x. So then you get that. So you could do it that way if you want, and that's totally fine. Um, when it comes to the chubby factors like the parentheses and stuff, I think it's easier to write it, do it like we did it above, but... Um, you can do whatever works for you, whatever method is successful for you, okay? Um, all right, let me save that, and we'll create a new page, and then we're just going to do this one last example, and then we'll move on to 38. All right, we're going to subtract this. Okay, I'm glad we're doing this because... This is potentially a confusing one. 1 over x squared minus 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay? First step, what? Uh, factor. Yeah, let's factor. Okay, so we're going to... How do you how do you factor x squared minus one? Uh, x plus one x plus one. Nice. And then what about this? Is that what you said in your mind or said out loud and I couldn't hear? All right, because one times two equals two. And if you are, you guys remember, if you're not totally solid on factoring yet, check it. x squared plus 2x plus 1x, foil it out, plus 2, combine the middle terms, x squared plus 3x plus 2, boom. 
All right, so how do we make these look like each other? So there's give and take. What does this one need? What does the left one need? X plus two. Nice. Are you the spokesperson today, Drew? I guess. Okay. All right, what does this guy need? X minus one. X minus one. Are you guys following that? Does this make sense? Because now, it just do whatever it takes to make this look the same type of thing. Okay? All right. So that's good. Now, next step, you could, uh, let's just write our denominator as one fraction, x plus 1, x minus 1, and then x plus 2. But here's the trick. Okay? So now you got your first numerator, which is x plus 2 but you're subtracting this entire numerator. So you're subtracting parentheses x minus one. Okay, why am I making such a big deal about that? Because you can't cancel. Yeah, so you can't cancel, you can't cancel that, but the other reason is you're subtracting a parentheses. So, um, that's sometimes hard to remember when you're subtracting fractions. That numerator, that entire numerator has to be subtracted. Well, you could do it in your head. X minus X cancels. What, what's 2 minus minus 1? 3. Okay. Don't, do, don't be Algebra 1-ish and say 2 minus 1. Okay, that's just one. So, or if it was, the more confusing one actually is when it's x plus one here. When you're subtracting x plus one, you're not just subtracting x, you're subtracting the whole numerator. So you're subtracting that positive one too, which um, can get confusing. Okay, so here's part of your answer. What's the last half of your answer? Uh. X cubed plus. Oh, if you want to factor it out. You don't need to factor it out. You just need to give me the exclusions. Oh. Cancel negative one or negative one. Yeah. Awesome. That's it for 30, uh, 37. There's a real application in... Uh, Example five, if you care about that crap. But let's move on to lesson uh, 37. So I'm just going to keep this recording, or 38. I'm going to keep this recording going, and we'll move on to 38. Any questions about 37? Okay, that homework will help drive, drive it home. I mean, you're, you're not assigned 37, but there'll be some less than 37 questions in problem set 38. And, uh, yeah, should be good. All right, 38. Oh, <laughs> 38. This is a big one. Um, I'm going to say that this is not going to be your favorite lesson. I mean, I like it, but that never, yeah. never is a good indication, apparently, because you hate me and you never like what I like. Okay. But today we are going to divide uh, dividing. polynomials. Okay. This is <laughs> one in Algebra 1 that you guys, you I think you... If you didn't cuss at the time, you started cussing during this lesson. So you're welcome for that new habit. Um, but Delaney's been cussing since she was like three. So. <laughs> so, all right. So remember, dirty monkey smell bad. 
So you, we can apply these same steps to long division in algebra as we can in just math seven, right? So there's just a few uh, specifications. Oh my gosh, I just realized that that word comes from the word specific. Like the specifications on something, like are the specific details. Did you guys know that? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so, so divide, did you know that, Mr. Flack? Yeah. Of course you did, you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's just get an example up here, and we're going to just do a real easy one. This is not what it's going to be like normally, so don't get your hopes up. So that we're going to divide 3x into this big polynomial, 12x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x plus four. Okay, the first step, if I said divide three into 1,004, then you would need to write three on the outside of the box and then 1,004. So you're not, you're not just doing, even though I just said 1,000 and then four, you still have to fill in the blanks of place value. You have to put 1,004, you can't just say one and then four, that's 14. So it works the same way in algebra. If we are missing a place value, uh-oh. It's gonna mess up my video later. Um, if you're missing a place value, like if you're missing an x squared, you would have to put zero x squared in there. You'll see why as we go through the steps that it won't line up. And when we get to our, remember Dirty Monkey Smell, our subtraction step, um, then you can only subtract like terms. And if you don't have those miss those zeros in there, then it's going to mess you up. All right, well, let's do it. Divide. So we're going to divide 3x into 12x cubed. You guys can do that. What's that? What's 3, 3x into 12x cubed? 4x. Yeah, just 4x squared, right? So 4x squared 12 divided by 3 is 4. x cubed over x. Just take an x away from x cubed. x squared. All right. Then we multiply. So we multiply our answer times our divisor. Okay. Well, that should work, right? We should get x cubed, 12x cubed. Subtract. And then the last one is bring down the next term. Instead of bring down next digit, we're going to bring down next term. Okay, so subtract, we get zero. So I'm not going to put a zero there. I'm just going to cross those out. So we have negative 6x minus nothing is just, oh, no, the zero, and then bring down the negative 6x. Don't forget to bring that negative sign down. So if you need to go through and chicken scratch that before you start the problem, that's probably smart. Okay, then we repeat. Divide. 3x into negative 3, 6x squared is negative 2x. Multiply. Negative 6x squared. Subtract. Subtracting a negative means adding a positive. That cancels. So then I bring down my next term, and I get 6x. How many times does 6x go into, or 3x go into 6x? Two times. Boom, multiply. Bring down. How many times does 3x go into 4? It doesn't. So you're going to write your remainder over your divisor, just like you do in regular division. So when you say, for example, if it was like nine divided, nine divided by two, it would be four, 
subtract. You guys do this in your head. And you would say four and one half. Well, what does and usually mean in math? Addition. Okay. So instead of putting just a four and over three X right next to that last term, just put a plus sign. Okay. So this is your answer. You can check it if you want. You can multiply this three X, just distribute it all across and see if you get that and you will. Okay. So that's the easy one. Let's move on to example two. And this is the one where, um, where you guys started cussing. Okay, so let's get a new page. Yeah, you need a whole page for this. Can I copy that? I don't think I can copy that, can I? I can't. It would be too easy if I could copy that onto the next page. Yeah, too easy. All right, so we're just going to rewrite those. So here's example two. We're going to divide uh, x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 3x, 13x squared. Well, anyway, I'll just write it, okay? So x plus 4, we're dividing by this binomial, which complicates things, into x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 13x squared minus 38x minus 24. Okay, now if you could follow that last example, there's no reason why you can't do this. So I'm going to modify these steps just a little bit. Okay? So the steps is still dirty monkeys smell bad, but when we're dividing, we can ignore that four. So we're just dividing the first terms only, okay, of the binomial. Of the binomial. So we're just dividing x to the fourth by x, just by x, okay? So what's that? X cubed. Okay, so I'm going to write it right here. You'll see why in a second. It doesn't matter where you put your answer up here. Any, it doesn't matter. So if you put it over the X to the fourth, don't worry about it. Just, um, just keep track of where it is. Now, what was the second step? We multiply, right? But this time we're multiplying the x times the divi the whole divisor. That's what we did in the last one, but there was only one term in the divisor. Now there's two terms. So when you multiply, you have to distribute. Yeah. Yeah. On the top is the x instead of x, like the very bottom. The x to the. Can you not no. see that? Yeah, but cubed, right? there, isn't it x cubed? Oh yeah. I don't know why I put x. Um, who said who caught that first? Drew. Drew. Of course you did, Drew. <laughs> All right, free problem set. So Thanks. Drew, dude, Drew, you're up to twenty points. That's just soft. So you have four no. free. <laughs> <laughs> Four free uh, pro problem sets you can cash in on. Okay, so I'm going to distribute. Now, if you need to rewrite it out here, but you could, do, you could do this in your head. X cubed times X plus 4. You can distribute it like that, or you could just do it in your head. X cubed times X is X to the 4th, and you will always get, I wrote the same ugly 4. Look at that. You, can, you will always get this. If you didn't get that, then you divided wrong, okay? X cubed, I would have found out that I divided wrong right away if I would have multiplied X times X and got X squared. Oh, X cubed. I didn't divide wrong. I just wrote it wrong. I don't normally do things wrong, like wrong, wrong. You know what I mean. Okay, and then X cubed times 4 is 4X cubed. All right, so that's good. 
Next one is subtract. Okay, remember, you're subtracting this whole thing. So um, I think it would be easier to chicken scratch. Chicken scratch. You're basically, you know that this is going to be, um, that this is going to cancel out. The x to the fourths are going to cancel out. Okay. So when you chicken scratch, I mean, those are going to go, go away. So just chicken scratch the second term. Okay. You, you can chicken scratch that if you want and then cancel it out. But now you're just dealing with two plus negative four. That's so much easier. So when you're chicken scratch, just chicken scratch the second term. And you're going to cancel the first terms. If, if you can't cancel them, that means they're not the same thing being subtracted, okay? So that's the only weird modification to these steps. Because after you do that, you're going to just bring down your next term and start again. So, and remember, when you start again, you're dividing the first terms. So this, you're going to get a negative 2x cubed bring down the negative 13x squared, and then we're gonna start the process again with the first term. And that's what you do in normal long division. You're kind of, if you're dividing by two digit number, you kind of look at that first digit anyway, like 23 into 400, uh, I don't know, 400, 83, you're kind of, well, 20 goes into 40. Well, two goes into four two times. I wonder if it's two. Oh, okay, then yeah, that'll work. So you're still looking at the first term. So how many times does X go into negative 2X cubed? Again, if you need the help, then just write it out here. Ne negative 2X cubed over X. And here's the, most of the time what's going to happen, especially in this curriculum, you're just dividing by an X. So what you're doing is you're the every time you're just taking away an exponent. So that's going to be negative 2x squared. Okay? Now multiply, distribute. We can do this in our head. Negative 2x squared times x is negative 2x cubed. Check. Negative 2x squared times 4 is negative 8x squared. Okay? Check. Now I'm going to chicken scratch, and I'm going to chicken scratch the, just the second term. So if I'm subtracting, I'm going to go plus positive, okay? So then that's negative 13 plus positive 8 is negative 5x squared. Bring down the next term, minus 38x, and do it again, okay? Just take divide an x out of that, and you're just taking away an exponent. So minus 5x, multiply, distribute. Negative 5x times x is negative 5x squared. Negative 5x times positive 4 is negative 20x. Okay, next, I'm going to chicken scratch. Just the second term because I'm subtracting. So plus positive, I end up with a negative 18x. Bring down the next term. One more division and then you're done. So just take away an x. The x is canceled this time. Negative 18x divided by x, you're left with negative 18. Multiply. Okay. So then chicken scratch, just that second term so minus negative 72 is plus positive 72 okay so that gives us what is that 48 okay so what do i do with this 48 <clears throat> what yeah, do i do plus four is three. yeah so plus 48 over our divisor, which is that x plus 4. Okay, so see how that was just the same thing as the last example, just a little bit of a gross mutation of it, okay? So you just had to deal with that lingering second term 
that the only time you had to worry about that is when you had to distribute when you did steps two and three. When you multiply, you have to distribute that answer to both terms. And then when you subtract, instead of just canceling and looking at the next term like you did in the last example, then you just chicken scratch that second term. Okay? Hold on. My camera's not plugged in all the way. Bloom. Okay. All right. So, um, is that is that okay? Is it doable? It, the, again, these problems, here's why, what makes these problems difficult. Every one of these steps is stuff you know how to do. You know how to divide like x to the fourth by x. You guys know how to do that. You've known how to do that. You know how to distribute. You know how to chicken scratch and subtract. You certainly know how to bring down the next term, but you have to do that like four times. So this problem is like 20 math problems in one problem. So it's not difficult stuff. It's just tedious and long stuff, but remembering the steps is the most difficult thing. So if you haven't already, write those down. Um, Dirty monkeys smell bad and just Try to be as detailed as possible. If that whole chicken scratch, the, just the second term, cancel the first term, if that's confusing to you, then ignore it. Just subtract that binomial. When you subtract a binomial, remember you have to subtract both terms in the binomial. So do what is successful for you. All right, we're going to do another example. And this is new. Uh, this is different than what we did in Algebra 1, It's but it's still the same steps and it's not anything too difficult, okay? So this is example three, and here's what I'm dividing. Okay, so I'm gonna write the problem so you see how it would start. We're gonna divide four x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 11x minus 484 by x squared plus 11. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite it. x squared plus 11 goes on the outside, right? <clears throat> Okay, and then this goes on the inside, 4x to the 4th minus x cubed. And now I'm going to show you why in a second, but let's put in that filler. There's no x squared term in there, so you need that 0, just like in normal division. You need the 0 if it's a 0 place value. If there's 0 tens in 1004, you still need a zero to fill that in. And you'll see, and I'll point out when we get there, I'll point out why that's the case. Okay? So I'm gonna put dirty monkey smell bad over here. Okay, so it's first step, divide. Remember, you're just dividing your first term. And this time, instead of dividing by an x, you're dividing by an x squared. So guess what? Instead of subtracting 1 from 4, you're subtracting 2 from 4. But if you need to write it out, write it out. 4x to the 4th divided by x squared is just 4x squared. Okay? So far, so good? That was dirty. Now, monkeys. Multiply. So we're going to multiply. We're going to distribute to both of those. So this one will get you back to that 4x to the 4th. 4x squared times 11 is positive 44x squared. Okay, what's the problem now? Now when I subtract, can I subtract x cubed minus x squared? No, I can't. So what I need to do is I need to move that over there. What probably would have been cleaner, and this is not what this book does, and you don't really need to do it over here. You definitely need to do it over here, but not over here. I should have said x squared plus 0x plus 
plus 11. If I did that, then this would have looked a lot different. It would have just, it would have looked like this. So 4x squared times x squared is 4x to the fourth. 4x squared times 0x is 0x cubed. Well, actually, just it would be 0. <laughs> but, and then 44x squared. So you could have just put a 0 there. And then now they're lined up nicely. But if you can remember to just put a spacer there for this, and you, then you don't need to fill that out there. But it doesn't hurt to do this, okay? It doesn't hurt to write it out like this. And so if, if it's hard to remember, okay, do I need to put it there or there? Just do it in both. Rewrite it, your divisor like that instead of this. Instead of multiplying by a binomial, you just multiply by the trinomial, but this middle term is always going to be zero. So now when I subtract, I'm subtracting this whole thing. So in this case, when I subtract, it doesn't matter if I add or subtract zero, so I'm not going to worry about that. But I could chicken scratch everywhere. So I'm going to chicken scratch all the way across, plus negative, negative, negative. Okay, those cancel. And I'm left with negative x cubed minus 44x squared. Okay. All right, and then bring down that 11x and do it again. How many times does x squared go into x cubed? Well, negative x times. So now I, I distribute. I'm distributing a negative. And remember, negative x times x squared is negative x cubed. Negative x times 11 is negative 11x. Oops. See, it's hard to remember. So I'm just going to say 0, and then negative 11x over here. All right, so these cancel. I'm going to chicken scratch everywhere else. Boom, boom, boom. So that is negative 11x becomes a positive 11x. Add it together, and they cancel. And then I'm left with this, minus 484 when I bring it down. So these, oh wait, sorry. Those cancel, but these do not. So I'm left with negative 44x squared. That cancels, and then I'm left with minus 484. Okay. And I could put a 0x there. That would probably be cleaner and better. Um, now I divide one more time. So that's negative 44 because the x squareds cancel. So I get negative 44 x squared minus, uh, so that's 484. And look at that, oops. And then it cancels completely and I get a zero remainder. So there's my answer. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the gist of that. I'm going to do one more thing, and then we'll be done, okay? So the last thing is just testing to see whether something is a factor. So how do you know if 3 is a factor of 343? Do you guys know the shortcut? Well, if you don't know the shortcut, which is adding the digits, that's how do you know if 3 goes into something. You can just divide it. Divide 3 into 43 and to see if there's no remainder. Okay? That's how you tell if, if something's a factor of something is if there's no remainder. Okay? So we can do example 4. I'm going to check if x plus 2 is a factor of this big long thing, which I'm just going to, and the way we do that is divide to see if there's a remainder. Okay, so this is what I'm checking to see. So I'm not going to rewrite it. All right, so x plus 2, 
Let's follow our steps. Dirty Monkey, smell bad. I'm going to whip through this. So if you need to rewatch this, you can. So I'm just taking a neck, dividing an X out of that. So that's 2X squared. Multiply 2X cubed plus 4X squared. Subtract. Subtract and you get negative 5X squared minus 7X. Divide again. Just take an X away from that. So minus 5X. Multiply, negative 5x squared minus 10x. Okay, subtract. You're subtracting a negative, so you're adding. So that's 3x plus 6. Okay, take an x out of that and you get 3. Multiply, 3x plus 6. Boom, subtract, you get 0. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, one more example of this. Uh, just so you have two to work on. And um, this is example 4B. I'm going to check to see if x plus 3 is a factor of 6x cubed minus 6x squared minus 6x plus 6. Whoa. This looks evil. Evil. Okay. I'm going to do it. Here I go. I'm doing it. Divide, take an x out of there, 6x squared, multiply, 6x cubed plus 18x squared, subtract, I get negative 24x squared minus 6x, divide, take an x away, negative 24x, and that's ugly, so negative 24x squared minus 72, subtract, blah, blah, so then I get a 66, that's an X there, 66 X plus six. All right, multiply or divide and you just get 66 times that is not gonna be that. So you don't even have to finish that. So that's like 198 or something ridiculous. Okay, and so when you subtract that, that is not zero so no it's not a factor okay so that's the gist um i know this is a lot of work but is it doable can you understand it especially if you follow those four steps and don't be afraid to uh your, your solutions manual is very detailed so if you need to take a peek and and they'll show the steps there usually. Do they show the steps usually with problems like this? Do you guys know? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you need to take, and if you get something wrong, definitely look at the steps and see, oh, okay. I, And usually the mistake, guys, is right here when you're subtracting instead of adding or something weird. Okay. But that's it. Well done. Good and faithful students. Um, any questions? Okay. Uh, I'm still planning on doing a test review on Tuesday. We'll do it. Uh, if I'm still in quarantine, then, then we'll just do it just like this. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and if you don't get your test correct, practice test done by tonight, midnight, um, poopy on you. But... You can still get five points if you do it by Tuesday before we go over it, okay? So, you guys good? Yeah. All right. Good to see you. Stay healthy. I'm signing off. You too. See ya.